Hey, what's up guys? So today I have the new AOK Zoe A1 Pro with the 7840U and today we are going to be putting it up against the ROG Li. I think it's going to be a pretty exciting test today. We're going to compare these two devices and see which one is the one to beat. So let's not waste any time. Let's get into it. I'm going to start my stopwatch here and unplug both of these devices they're both at 100 percent battery we're gonna be running this test and at the end of this we'll be able to have an idea of the um, battery life and consumption of these two devices so let's start off with the screen of these two devices let's talk about the screen so the screen on these devices are similar um but different enough. I say similar because the resolution is fairly similar. The AOK Zoe A1 Pro is 1920 by 1200, so 12, 1200p screen, and the RG Ally is a 1080p screen, so 1920 by 1080, 16 by 9, 16 by 10. The AOK Zoe A1 Pro is 8 inches diagonal, and the the sorry, the RG Ally is seven inches diagonal so this is an inch larger than the rg li and a slightly taller aspect ratio so the screen is larger overall now as far as the screen goes i will say you may notice on this video that the rg li screen is slightly brighter than the um, a1 pro so the screen is slightly brighter here i don't know if you can see that over the video how it comes up off over video but i will say that in person the screen is brighter on the ROG Ally. In person, it's just slightly brighter. You can just see that the brightest point is a little brighter than the brightest point on the um, AOK Zoe. Um, but it may look different in a video, but I'm just telling you in person, I can just tell that the ROG Ally screen is brighter. Now, the screen on the ROG Ally is also a higher refresh rate. So this is 120 hertz versus 60 hertz or you know 60 fps um max so you do have some pros and cons some trade-offs as far as you know your screen you want a larger screen then of course the yeah, okay zoe has you covered but if you want a slightly brighter screen and a faster refresh rate then the rg ally is going to be your best bet right now it's currently the only 120 hertz um handout on the market right now there are some others coming out soon this year but they're not here yet so currently as the filming of this video rg is going to be your best bet and your only um option for a 120 hertz screen so it depends on you know what you prefer if you prefer the larger screen then of course you have a full inch more than the RG Ally as well as a toilet aspect ratio so it's going to be more immersive so if you're looking for the most immersive you know gaming experience and you play games that are you know AAA games where it's hard to hit 120 hertz on the RG Ally then you may you know favor the AOK Zoe but I will say that the variable refresh rate is undeniably an amazing feature on the RG Ally is going to be able to keep that gameplay very smooth even if your frame rate drops below like 60 or 120 you're able to get that rev variable refresh rate so that your gameplay is like 99 percent smooth most of the time so that is an underrated feature i not even underrated like that's just like a great feature to have because that variable refresh rate is going to have you covered when your frame rate is fluctuating that's not something you have on the a1 pro but I am a fan of this 8 inch screen I have to say if I was up to me I would pick up the A1 Pro just because of that large screen but that's just me it's a tough decision you know having both of these devices but I will say I, I gravitate towards the larger screen because it just is it's just more immersive when you're playing games and you know most of the time you can you know lock your frame rate to 60 and have a great time uh, even though you don't have a variable refresh rate but i will not um disregard the amazing amazing advantage that the variable refresh rate and 120 hertz has on the um rg ally now moving from the screen 
let's talk about the overall design of these two handouts the design is different as you can see i have added these um these grips here so just try to ignore these grips i won't count that in the design um so i have the a1 pro has this sort of rounded design is more round the rng ally is sort of more angular and sharp sharper angles as you can see here is more angular so i do like the design of both of these handhelds it's really up to personal preference so it really depends on you know what you consider to be a better design i will say that the rng ally is probably has a little bit more character because you can see on the side here we have this sort of badge here that is sort of chrome and iridescent on the back you have the vents that are sort of the rg logo and this um, sort of strip here so it depends on what you um, consider to be a better design i will say they both have um, a different sort of characteristics i do like the accents of the a1 pro it does have some sort of cyberpunk lines on here you may or may not like that it doesn't really bother me but the overall design i think it's a toss-up between which one you like i will say they both have a you know their own sort of characteristics and it depends on what you prefer i will say one thing that cannot be sort of ignored is the sort of angular design and the more curved design um of the a1 pro so you have angular and more curvy so that's something that's sort of objective the overall design which one you like that subjective is up to you i will say that this one seems like more gamer i guess because it sort of has that um that rog um sort of gamer-esque design and this one is more sort of like like cyberpunk even with like the colors like the yellow sort of like that that cyberpunk yellow um so it's really up to you in, as, as far as design and what you prefer now let's talk about the ergonomics coming right off the design we go to ergonomics now as you can see here i'll talk about this sort of grip thing that i added here and this was to improve the ergonomics because the ergonomics for me is not the best on the rg ally you can see here it has a slight grip but let's look at the the comparison between the grip on the a1 pro and then the rg ally you can see the the grip is much more shallow it's much more slim on the rg ally than it is on the um, a1 pro so this has a much more ergonomic feel in the hand when you're gaming it does feel more um, ergonomic it does feel more comfortable to hold in the hand and that's one of the reasons why i added this grip just to give it a little bit more um thickness a little bit more ergonomics a little bit more grip so i do give a you know a slight nod towards the aok zoe just for those ergonomics i will say it is very balanced in the hand it does feel very balanced it's not too heavy it's not you know too light it doesn't feel hollow it does feel solid when you're playing it you know it doesn't creak or anything like that so i will give a point to ergonomics to the um, aok zoe just because it does have a larger grip as you can see there so the grip is much larger looking at those devices side by side we can see that the grip is much larger on the a1 pro so the a1 pro does win as far as ergonomics are concerned now coming from ergonomics let's move on to the actual controls of the devices now controls of course you're going to have a similar experience because it's like an xbox xbox style controller so when the rng ally you have all of your you know buttons here you have your triggers bumpers joysticks all that good stuff you do have the added benefit of having these back buttons here so that is awesome to see now on the a1 pro of course you have your buttons joysticks triggers I do like the triggers on the A1 Pro a little bit more. I do like the triggers here a little bit more than the the triggers on the RNG Ally. Just personal preference, um, just the travel and also the you know the actuation pressure and feel. I do like the triggers on the A1. I mean the RNG 
the A1 Pro, sorry, I do like the triggers on the A1 Pro a little bit better. Now the joysticks is another thing that is better on the A1 Pro because these are whole effect joysticks, so you're not gonna get any drift. Now this is just a, um, a standard analog stick, so you do the possibility to get drift. Um, they are pretty accurate, dead zones aren't um, too bad when you get into software and adjust it, but I will say that the joysticks are better on the AOK Zoe buttons. Um, buttons are going to be pretty much um, the same on both, so you can't really complain about the buttons on either of these devices. The, I guess the face buttons, the ABXY, you know, start and select, you can't really complain there. Um, I will say that the D-pad, this D-pad gets a lot of hate, but it is serviceable. It, I haven't had any sort of like, issues with it, but a lot of people do not like the style, and it could be a little bit more, I guess, distinct, but you know, whenever I press a direction, it does go to where I wanted to press. But I will just have to give the the point for the D-pad to the RG Ally because it is more, you know, it just feel more discreet, more distinct, and more tactile in each direction that you are going to be pressing it. So I give the, the point to the D-pad to the RG Ally. The A1 Pro wins as far as the joysticks and triggers just for me. Buttons are pretty much a tie. The RG Ally wins for the D-pad. Now let's talk about performance. Now performance on these devices is very similar. This is the um, Z1 Extreme. This is the 7840U. One thing I will say that this device has four times the RAM. That's right, four times. This is 16 gigabytes of RAM on the RG Ally, and this is 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now before you come on into the comments and say, you don't need 64 gigabytes of RAM for gaming, you're right. But there are applications, you know, on a PC that uh, more RAM is better. So I will not say that a 64 gigabytes of RAM is going to give you four times the game performance because it won't. The game performance is pretty much going to be limited by the GPU and not the RAM most time. But I will say if you're doing things like virtualization and a lot of other PC things that is for another video, having more RAM does help just overall smoothness and giving you sort of that um, opportunity to utilize more RAM if needed now i will say that we're going to do some benchmarks here and we're going to check out just a brief little glimpse of the performance between these two devices but they are very similar i'm going to be running this device at around um 25 watts just because i know that the rg ally in performance mode is going to settle at around 25 watts so we're running this in performance mode or turbo mode I mean and we're running this at 25 watts just to sort of match the same wattage between these devices okay so this is Dirt 5 running at um, 1200p low settings we're going to see the benchmark run the benchmark and see the results here okay so Dirt 5 1200p low settings the result was 82 FPS on average and then we had a minimum of 48, maximum of 101, low 1% of 68, which is very good, and a low 0.1 of 64. So very smooth, very good. Now let's check out the RG Ally. Just so you can see, we are in turbo mode. Now let's run the benchmark at 1080p low settings. Okay, so the ally has finished the benchmark. Got an average of 76, minimum of 20, maximum of 93, low 1% of 63, which is good, and a low 0.1 of 48.9. So that actually is pretty good. The A1 Pro did slightly better, um, but you're gonna have an, a great experience with both of these devices. I would just say that the A1 Pro did do slightly better in this benchmark. Run one more benchmark, and then we'll talk about the battery, and then I'll get you guys out of here. Okay, so I have Returnal running on both of these devices. We are at 1080p um, low settings with FSR set to performance, and we're gonna run the benchmark and see how they both do. Okay, so the benchmark has finished here, and we had an average of 45 on the AOK Zoe. 
and an average of 41 on the RGLI. So just um, a slight improvement on the A1 Pro. Um, not much, about four frames. So you can see that that actual RAM is helping us slightly here, but not much. I think the GPU is still being maxed out here. So 41, 45. So you're gonna see a slight, a slight improvement um, in performance at you know 25 watts. This can go up to 30 watts, but it's not gonna be very noticeable. I will say that this the A1 Pro did win these two benchmarks, but you're gonna get similar performance across a variety of games between these two devices. So I wouldn't say that the performance is a huge, a huge leap on the A1 Pro, but it is you know something that can be noted where it does you know win um, in most benchmarks but that's just sort of the a sort of quick and concise run through of performance anyway now let's check out the battery life and how these two devices have have done so I've been running both of these devices off the um, power for 31 minutes now I never stopped the clock and both of these devices were unplugged for the entire time let's check out how they did as far as battery life Okay, it's hard to see, but the AOK Zoe is at 79% and the RG Ally is at 71%. So after running these tests, it's um, just a little under 10% um, better battery life on the AOK Zoe. I will say that when you're playing, you can definitely expect to get um, more battery life out of the A1 Pro about 10 to 15 percent depending on the game that you are playing i will say that you can drop the tdp on the a1 pro down to four watts i believe the lowest you can go is 10 watts on a custom profile profile you can take it down to around seven to eight watts but this device for some reason it doesn't really like to be that low okay so battery life does go to the a1 pro by around 10 to 15 percent so let me just get the clock one here before anyone says that we cheated the clock. So running these both for around 33 minutes doing all the tests that you saw in this video, we did lose around 20% and 30%, you know, respectively. So not so bad. I will say that the battery life, of course, is better. Now, as far as recommendations, now these devices are, I guess for different type of people. If you are in the United States and you have a Best Buy near you, then it's probably best to just go for the RG Ally. If you're outside the US or it's hard to get Ally and you can get a A1 Pro, then I think this is a great device. Now, as far as price goes, this device does cost more, but I did, this has two terabytes of storage and 64 gigabytes of RAM. This has 16 um, gigabytes of RAM and it comes with 512 gigabytes of storage. I did upgrade this to two terabytes of storage, which adds an extra $200. So the price isn't much different for these two devices. So for your extra money, you get a USB 4 port, you get a USB A 3.2, and then on the bottom, you get another USB um, 4 port. You get a larger screen, a larger battery, um, better ergonomics, and you know an overall co more comfortable gaming experience now for the rg ally you get a faster display a brighter display um, better speakers and you're going to get most likely better support from uh, asus and best buy now depending on which one you like you know you can go either way but i will say if you're in the us then the rg ally is going to be your best bet and you can't really go wrong with the RG Ally, but I will say that the A1 Pro does win in some regards. I really do like that you can use any eGPU with the A1 Pro. You don't need the proprietary XG Mobile, and you just have a bunch of extra ports that you can plug stuff into. The RG Ally, you're pretty much going to need a hub um, to utilize any sort of peripherals um, unless you're just not going to be charging it at the same time. So that's something to consider. Anyway, this video is going on long enough. I'm gonna head out and let me know in the comments down below what you wanna see next, what specific test you wanna see. And if you made it to this point in the video, comment D-pad, comment D-pad in the comments for a chance to win a special prize. Anyway, I'm out, check you guys in the next one, peace.